Hello and welcome to Real Estate. I am Saloni Shukla. It is India's biggest investment market and through this show, we look to empower you to invest wisely in real estate. Over the coming weeks and months, this show will be your most definitive guide into the world of property investments. So let's have a look at what we have for you on the show today. On our top pick this week, we tell you where are non-resident Indians headed for real estate investments in India. If you are homebound any time in the near future and buying a home in the mother country is on your to-do list, Real Estate breaks down the do's and don'ts for non-resident Indians to invest in India. Should you head to the United States for your dream home, Bloomberg brings you an insight to the residential real estate market as home prices in 20 cities across the states show highest rise since 2006. And as always, we answer all your real estate queries in our special segment, Ask Real Estate. All that in just a bit, but first up, a quick recap on what made news in real estate this week. The Ajay Piramal Group has formed a strategic alliance with Canada Pension Plan Investment Board to provide rupee debt financing to residential projects in Indian cities. Piramal and CPBIB will jointly invest about 3,000 crore rupees in the venture initially. Mumbai-based developer Lodha Group has gone ahead and bought yet another asset in London. Spread across over one acre, Lodha will have to shed about 900 crore rupees for this land purchase. Also, the Leela Group of Hotels is set to be in talks with sovereign wealth funds of Abu Dhabi, Qatar and Malaysia to acquire two of its marquee properties located in Chennai and Delhi for nearly 2,000 crore rupees. The Indian real estate market continues to remain a hotbed for property investments. With the rupee sliding against the dollar, there's never been a more opportune moment for NRI investors. With property prices escalating the most in Bangalore and Hyderabad, our reporter Preda Barwa tells you where are the non-resident Indians headed to. There's nothing like the reassurance of having a home where your heart is. And with the dollar at an all-time high, there's never been a more opportune moment for non-resident Indians. The sudden gem for real estate investments, Chennai tops the chart for NRIs flocking to strike a good deal in real estate. Traditionally, Chennai has been the most preferred city in the entire South India and it continues to attract investments for it offers the best of educational, healthcare, infrastructure and quality living. According to National Housing Bank, house price index in Chennai increased to 330 in Q3 from 314 last year. It's definitely not a good news for home buyers back home, but for NRI investors, the depreciating rupee is a key catalyst for investments in real estate in India. Our top pick for NRI investments is the IT hub of India, Bangalore. Take a look. And as for Cham survey highlighted, that Bangalore is one of the most favorite property investment destination for high net worth individuals and the city also tops the list in terms of investments from non-resident Indians. The IT hub of India that attracts a sizable population due to its cosmopolitan culture is home to over 10,000 individual dollar millionaires. Bangalore also witnessed the highest yearly change of over 10% in terms of average prices per square foot. If you look at the southern markets, Bangalore continues to really offer many value for money options. That's one market where uh, you know you have all kinds of developments uh, which are sort of villa, stroke high rises, stroke plotted developments. And I think that that kind of increases the gamut as far as NRIs are concerned. Pune has seen a lot of spillover demand actually uh, from Mumbai. So Pune is a, is a good combination of both NRI and domestic investment. So, so you do have, like I said, a mix of demand, which is where people do have some long-term plans, uh, you know, on, on really living in that city. 
Of the many cities in India, growth in Pune has been fast-paced and well-planned, and this has attracted the NRI segment tremendously. The pleasant weather condition provides an ideal opportunity for NRIs to settle in this city. Pune's proximity to Mumbai offers an added advantage. As per the National Housing Bank's Home Price Index, Pune recorded a 28% jump since the last one year. Hyderabad was marred with continuous upheaval due to bifurcation of a separate state. Though the prolonged indecision over Telangana did impact the real estate market, investor demand are now gaining ground and the property market is breathing back to life. Experts believe real estate prices are likely to pick up due to improved investor sentiment in the immediate term. A lot of Indian developers are giving uh, attractive uh, price offers, uh, some add-ons, uh, discounts. Uh, and that way this community is also attracted and uh, the previously it was a practice a uh, few years before that NRI uh, pricing was slightly higher than the domestic one but now that practice doesn't continue the developer every Indian developer charge the same price whether he sell to Indian consumer or he sell to NRI consumer who is staying in abroad Kerala's commercial capital Kochi is a long-time favourite for NRI investments. Almost 60 to 80 percent of all residential properties booked in the city are registered by Keralites living overseas. With an array of waterfront homes and luxury villas to choose from, NRI investments in 2013 rose by 20 to 25 percent in Kochi. Investors from the Gulf, Malaysia, Singapore and Hong Kong form the largest share of the pie in terms of real estate investments. So what's drawing NRI investors back home apart from the falling rupee? Discounted prices by developers, easy home loans by Indian banks and not to forget social security. To talk more on NRI investments into the country, we have with us Karthik Varma, co-founder PropTiger.com joining us from New Delhi. Karthik, thank you for joining us. My first question to you would be, as far as NRI investment into the country is concerned, we've seen the southern markets get a large amount of, of that investment. But as far as outlook is concerned, what is your outlook as far as investment coming in from overseas, especially non-resident Indian goals? You know, NRI activity always exists, whether the markets are good or bad. NRIs have uh, an emotional attachment to the motherland, for the lack of a better expression. And so they'll always be looking for property, you know, on the uh, scenario that they might want to come back or they finish their work experience overseas and they want to return home or they're considering India as a potential destination for their investment money. It so happens that right now, with the rupee having weakened as much as it has over the past one year, uh, properties in dollar terms are about 20% cheaper for them than what they might have been 12 months ago. This is all in the context of all the macroeconomic uncertainty, political uncertainty, which is acting as a bit of a drag as far as their appetite to buy property in India is concerned, particularly if they're looking at it as an investment uh, kind of option for themselves. So while there's always interest for NRIs to buy property in India, in the current context, people are waiting and watching. This doesn't mean that there's virtually no NRI activity. On the contrary, there are a lot of people who are continuing to deploy their capital into property in India from overseas. Uh, it's happening in destination markets in the south or places uh, which are you know, good hotbeds for the Indian diaspora all around the world. So whether it's uh, the Gujaratis in Gujarat, or people from uh, Punjab who are living overseas in North America or the UK or Australia, or people in the South who are living in uh, Southeast Asia, etc. So there are pockets of areas where NRI activity is strong. It isn't as strong as one would have expected it to be given the depreciation of uh, the rupee, but that's, as I said, on account of uh, all the political uncertainty that exists right now. Mm -hmm. Are there any specific locations that you would recommend uh, to NRI investors or they are looking into India currently? Well, the location preference is often driven by, you know, someone's uh, social or emotional attachment to a particular region. So if there's a lot of people uh, from Kerala who are working in the Middle East, they'll obviously, you know, choose 
uh, Kerala as a destination for their money. If there are a lot of people in the IT service sector who are from the south and you know from cities like uh, Bangalore or Hyderabad or Chennai, they might choose to uh, you know put their money to work over there. And if you know you've got relatives in a certain part of the country where they might be able to manage the property for you or because you happen to visit that particular location because you're visiting friends and family over there, then that's a destination that you might look at. Uh, we don't really look at it in terms of top five destinations uh, for the reason that I just mentioned right now. But generally speaking, uh, places like Bangalore, Kochi, Chennai, uh, some parts of Punjab, uh, Mumbai, uh, Delhi NCR are always very popular with NRIs. Well, so clearly those investments have come in the southern markets, but as far as the metros are concerned, especially Mumbai and the NCR market, have you seen a drop as far as NRI investments in those areas are concerned? And what is your sense as far as uh, transaction volumes go? Uh, while we are getting a lot of online traffic onto our website from NRIs uh, living all over the world, uh, that's not really translating into the kind of transaction volume that one would have otherwise expected. Now, if you look at it just from a North India perspective, a Delhi NCR, are we seeing that kind of transaction volume or is it any different from South India? Uh, to some extent, it is, uh, but it's driven by a lot of the political uncertainty as well. Even in the southern part of the country, the volume of NRI transactions aren't as high as what they might have been, say, two years ago. So NRI interest has definitely slowed down a little bit, uh, but it's not non-existent either. All right, Karthik, stay with us. We will come back to you for more views. It is time for a short break to get our expert opinion on your property matters. Feel free to call us or email us. Details coming up on the screen. On the other side, we bring you an NRI checklist that you must go through before investing in the home country. Keep watching Real Estate.